Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by the Nerd Forum, and in today's video, we are gonna be making uh, an explosion sprite image progression. So it's a form of VFX, and uh, especially for game engines, when you are, of course, making VFX, some VFX uh, tend to use instead of in-game VFX, like having to manually make the VFX with objects and models and certain textures. Some people prefer to render the VFX in a separate engine like Ambigen, like Blender, and just import it as a sprite. So whether you're making a 2D game or 3D game, however you know how to work with sprites, today we're going to be learning how to make sprite progression images. I'm not going to show you how to make the explosion, I'm just going to show you how to make the sprite uh, progression image. So how it starts right now, I'm in Blender. I have my explosion, of course. Pretty simple explosion. I'm using a particle system, it's not hectic. Now, of course when you're making sprites, I prefer to make uh, their explosion pretty short explosion progression. So it starts off and the smoke, I, I don't like having the smoke linger for too long. So pretty much my starting frame is from frame 4 and my end frame is frame, 20, frame 27, which is probably approximately like 23 frames. Yeah, 23 frames in total, but around, yeah, around there. So yeah. I prefer that you make the frames quite small, like the count of frames, because if you make a a frame count of up to a hundred, you're gonna have to make you're gonna have to be making a a, a image progression of a hundred frames, which is like a hundred pictures. It'll take you much longer. Not that it's impossible, but it'll take you much longer than having to have the same thing, just you know, pretty short. You don't have to waste too much time. So we're gonna be exporting it as an image file in png with 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 uh with an alpha channel so right now i'm using ev of course i'm using blender 3.0 simple stuff i'm not using any of the latest blender i don't know it's just, i just find it more simple with the uh, with this version of blender so my resolution i i would suggest you have a squared resolution of your camera of your image so mine right now is set to 1561, 1561, and at a percentage of 70%. So it's going to give me an image res a resolution of 1,344. And I've set my frame rate to 50 frames per second. Okay. Now, um, when it comes to my output, when it comes to my output, I'm going to set my output to, let me probably make another one. Make a new folder, explode 006. Yes, press accept and set this to explode. Now, my file format, I'm going to set this to PNG so that each frame is rendered as an image. Then RGBA so you can get the alpha channel. At the bottom here, I don't know if I turned on my transparency. So come to film, turn on transparency. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So let me see. Yeah, that's pretty basic. So right now, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna come to rendered view and see how it looks. Yeah, pretty simple explosion. So I'm going to set this to yeah, render animation and see how it goes. Okay, so now that it's done, um, we can come out of Blender and go to our file. And of course, perfect. Our texture progression. So it goes, of course, from here to there, to there, to there, you know, and so on. So since it's pretty short, it's going to be easier to arrange on. Whatever image manipulation software you have, whether GIMP, whether Photoshop, I don't know any other, but yeah, whichever you guys are using, I'm pretty sure you can follow this method uh, in, a, in a parallel way. So I have GIMP, I use GIMP. So what I usually do is so I have my, just so I get the parameter on how it works, on how to arrange it. Maybe there's another way I'm doing this, but I don't know, man. I really tend to stick to my old ways. So I'm going to 
Let's set it to alignment. Click on this and put it by the top left corner. Now, since I have that, I'm going to zoom in. So it shows you the guidelines on how the image is sitting. And from the corners in GIMP, you can drag a, a ruler guide. A guide, pretty much. That you can use to snap things to. So what I have, I'm just zooming as close as possible so I get it perfectly snapped. Great. And I'll do the same thing from the top. Drag from the top, come to the bottom. So however you guys know how to add guides to your software, just please add guides that can be used for snapping an image to or anything to. Just use for snapping. So since that is perfectly snapped, I can now set select and see view, snap, snap to guides, snap to canvas edge. Yes. So now I can snap this however I like. Yeah, so that is perfect. So since this will be a process of continuously having to make, I bring the next one. This will be a process of having to continuously add guides. So when I make a new part, I need to add a guide right there until I reach the end. So of course, uh, when it comes to making uh, the size of the canvas, of course I didn't show that, but right now my image my image canvas size is 8,000 by 8,064 and, and a height of. So it really depends on you how many you want the how many frames you want on your columns and on your rows. So in terms of columns, uh, here I think I made up to I think six columns, and then. Uh, so if you choose to have six columns, then you have to calculate how many columns you want to have. You, I mean, you have to calculate how many rows you want to have. So it's really up to you. So if you want to have, for example, two columns, then you probably have quite a number of rows. If you want to have four columns, and yeah. So then you'd have to multiply your image uh, width by the amount of columns you have. So right now, since I, I, I plan to have one, two, three four, five, six, six columns. My image size is, come to my image, my image size, the width is one, three, four, four. So I was gonna, I'm gonna multiply that. So I'd multiply one, three, one, three, four, four times six. They have it 80 by 64, which is exactly the width. And then Going down, if you want about four, it's the same thing, just it's a multiplication thing. It's pretty simple. So since I'm gonna to have to be adding guides in every single place, let me come back to the guides, it's adding that. And since I'm gonna be adding guides, it's quite a long process. So I had already done it before making the video. And there I have it. Everything with guides. So it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4. So 6 columns and 4 rows. Now, so I don't disturb anyone. Let me just close this. So it's just that process of making, you know, guides that can be snapped to. So I'm going to add the first one.
So as you can see, it is all set. Now you have your image progression perfectly set. So then you can export it. Of course, whatever name, just make sure, of course, to turn off the background so that uses a PNG or any file format that uses an alpha channel. It could be a TIFF, whatever. <laughs> So now when it comes to importing this into whatever engine you're using, or whether you're using this for Godot, whether you're using this for Unity, whether you're using this for um, the Blender game engine, uh, uh, UPBGE, whether you're using this for Range engine, uh, any Python engine, any of the smaller engines or whatever engine uh, uses sprites as a primal way of making VFX, then yeah, I think this process would be great for, of course, making the VFX and then porting them into your preferred game engine now of course for the people that uh you know think this process is quite hectic and i have made an explosion pack simple explosion packs on my gum road so for anyone that may feel maybe lazy or just don't think that this that you want to take this whole process you can of course you just want a realistic explosion you've been looking for a realistic explosion you can go onto my gum road and get the files over there so yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again next time.